be anyway. After midnight, the racers form a convoy to leave for racing outside Moscow. One of the organizers' cars has a portable radio station, and all the radio receivers of the participants' and spectators' audio systems are tuned in to its frequency. Turning from the third transport ring to Kutuzovsky Avenue outside Moscow. When in Kutuzovsky, take only two right-hand lanes. The organizers use their radio to guide the convoy to the race's starting point. In order to avoid breaking the traffic rules within the city boundaries, the drivers keep to 60 kilometers per hour. But as soon as the convoy reaches the highway near the Moscow boundary, the Roadhog's patience is lost. Having blockaded the traffic along the five lanes of the six-lane highway, the racers have several warm-up starts. Several minutes later, the convoy goes further outside the city. At the same time, the club's head and its several assistants select a route. The criteria are that it must be perfect asphalt 402 meters long and preferably without active traffic. We have 10, maybe 15 routes suitable for our racing standards. Several reconnaissance people are sent there to see if the road is free and if a race can be held. It is nearly morning by the time the racers reach the venue, a traffic-free part of the road outside the city. The participants have woken up. Several races will take place before a traffic police patrol squad comes around and the racing will have to be stopped. For security reasons, the route is blockaded during the race. Two cars start at once. About 400 metres away from the starting line, there is a car to mark the finish and to determine the winner. Number 14 is taken over by half a length. After the race is over, the drivers let the cars, which stop during the contest, to continue on their way. The horns of the drivers of heavy trucks show their discontent. There is still some time for several more races, and Dimitri is ready for a start. <clears throat> As usual, the street lights suddenly going off remind the street racers that morning has come. The racing ends as the traffic police show up. However, the patrol found only spectators as the racers had vanished in an instant before next Friday.
You can watch it live. Or you can pick your own series. You can even learn a little bit of Russian. You can do it all by just lifting your finger. Click online and Russia will click into place. Almost three years. I'm living at Tripoli, but I'm working at Musurata. I'm in Libya. I'm a newcomer in Rome here. I don't know how to speak Italian language. I'm a Ghanaian. I'm here almost two, two months. They give me appointment to go hospital, but yet I've not seen the doctor. I feel pains. I, also, I used to feel pains, but sometimes I cannot sleep. Migrants from Asia and Africa took a liking to this place just outside Termini railway station a long time ago. They hang around it all day long. A local journalist coming here in the evening gathers a great deal of attention. She wants information about the refugees for her blog. There are hundreds of people here. Yes, we have received residence permits, but the shelters where we used to spend the night have been closed down. We now live in the open. We sleep on the street. We have no jobs. We have nothing to eat. We can't find a place to sleep. I want to speak to you. You have a problem. You have a lot of problems. You are from Libya. Yes, yes. Even the shoot was gone. In my pocket. There's a reason behind this blogger's interest in refugees. These people have been described as debris from the Arab revolutions, which have forced them to seek refuge in Europe. When they started a new life here from scratch, they began to learn the true meaning of the word tolerance. Spring comes early in Rome. It's an ideal time for tourists because it's still cool in the city, meaning people don't need to seek out shade come midday. The Italian capital attracts droves of tourists. But this building on the city's outskirts is not among the world's greatest attractions. Because it's hidden from view, only a handful of people are ever aware of its existence. It's called the Squat, a shelter for illegal immigrants and refugees from Africa. The residents here rarely welcome journalists in the squat. Excuse me, ma'am. They're worried that police may come knocking based on news reports, but they have made an exception for the RT crew. Look, these people are living here. Come to this country illegal. I don't have paper, I don't have anything. I don't have any person who can help that. For this room, it's nine person, nine person, it's three person here. Two person is here under this sofa. Almost 600 people inhabit this floor alone. Right now, most of them are out on the streets trying to earn whatever money they can to eke out a living. Others work at a poor excuse for an auto repair center found right under the windows of the flop house. We have many, many, many people that have here a madness, you know, madness. Probably about uh, 12, 11 person that has a mind problem. We are here without anything. There is no food and there is no work. There is no facility here. The latest arrivals are in an even worse condition than the others. There's no more room for beds or mattresses on the floor. The refugees have to accommodate themselves in the corridors and staircases. I used to bring about four person here, four person. Gabriela Del Grande, who runs the Fortress Europe blog dedicated to migrant issues, and Italian-Russian journalist Veronika Shenina are discussing the latest news. It's just been reported that another batch of refugees has arrived on the Italian island of Lampedusa, in Italy's south. 
These are the first boats to come to Lampedusa since last September. It is not yet clear how things will work out in the end, but the best way to understand what is happening on Lampedusa is to visit the island right now. In the Middle Ages, this island served as a haven for Barbary corsairs. By the late 20th century, it was a popular resort. Many Italian families used to spend the weekend here, 